rock is actually um, fastened to the pot somehow, but what I do is to dig the soil out around the roots and then and then top it up with... And you snip, snip the roots? When not, you on, not on that, no. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't, because okay. I, I think it's probably the aerial roots keep it going. Right. And, uh, and here we've got hellebores around this magnificent yeah. weeping cherry, and you were telling me before that this was grafted onto a stalk. The stalk's yeah. about two metres tall. It was part of the original garden, because all, all these properties were on a, an estate. The original house is still here. That was down in a far, very far corner, hidden behind a rhododendron and looking very sick. And I only noticed it because it was flowering the first year we were here. So I, I um, made up my mind that it was, it was going to be a feature, and it certainly is now. So yes. it's formed the, the main main structure or, or um, the botanic umbrella of the circle. So this is garden. the centre of this beautiful brick circle mm. and underneath the hellebores. And above it's kind of like a giant umbrella of leaves <laughs> does it die right back in winter y it yes. all its leaves in winter? it has no leaves at all in winter which is good because it makes this area very sunny right then in spring it's just a complete we have have the pale pink of this is foremost and cherry and then we have have the flowering um oh, flowering um, memory's gone again. <laughs> that'll, that'll come back to me anyway. But it, it's it, there's a, a very, that's that's a very dark flowering, and this is pale, and it just looks. This so is a beautiful. lovely section of the garden with a beautiful <clears throat> chair for you to sit and contemplate and meditate and enjoy yeah. it. Very very famous design chair, though. As you see them in lots of the English gardens. Um, it, it's cedar, so it won't rot. But you can paint them. I've seen them painted Chinese red and all sorts of different colours. But I like. Yeah, like yeah. the blends in naturally. Yeah, blends yeah. In naturally. And here, over here, we've got um, a beautiful lime green maple, small. This was a friend. Yes, this is the moon maple, and my friend's surname was Moon, and I planted a, a few, a, a few plants that I've uh, uh, in. Um, well, in tribute to, you know, friends over the years. And, and I've got my mum's favourite camellia. I've got the maple and magnolias. And and I've, I've planted um, a few plants. Some of them, the people have actually planted them themselves. So I think it's a lovely it's a lovely memento of people that you're very close to. Absolutely. And, so uh, I think we were saying before, I, most, well, quite a few people I know, including myself, plant a tree whenever we lose mm. someone mm. and we call them we've got a tree at the front called Juliet's tree yes. and we you know that they're, they're named right. for the person they are yeah they're, they're very special and, and the same with people who, who who give me gifts as plants you know you always remember the the plant that they gave you and uh, yes much more than anything any materialistic type thing and, and the hostas too they they it's very much sort of um leaves and well these and are, are really an unusual leaf hosta, is this yeah, the hosta. hosta? Right. and you yeah. were saying before that these are die right back in winter and that's when you plant tulips around them because they've got big leaves that cover looks like two square meters of ground so no weeds grow up but when they die back there would be bare ground but in go the tulips in go the tulips in between them because you see you see no sign of them whatsoever and they lie dormant, and then in spring, of course, that they, they come up. The snails absolutely love them. So my good friend Imelda next door, who is a great carpenter, gives me um, sawdust. Oh, and that okay. keeps the snails off without having to use pellets. Right. And, uh, okay. Because they won't, they won't sort of travel over rough shavings, which is good. Right. This wisteria is lovely too. That, that shelters this whole garden as well as the pine. And that was a picture. Ah, yes, this is six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, it it, looked, it was amazing. It, uh, we that had colour. a very good year. Yeah. So, so mm. 2020 has been bad in some aspects, but the garden has been wonderful. And you've got quite a few CDs hanging on strings yes. around your garden. Yes. For what purpose? They keep keep the uh, uh, parrots and birds away from eating the flowers for some reason it's a bit like a scarecrow yes <laughs> and, and the reflection i don't know why but uh, it seems to work um 
might be an old old wives' tale, but I think some of those old wives were very wise. Yeah, well, that couldn't be old wives because the old mm. CD hasn't been around for that <laughs> long, has it? No, well, that's true. No. Mm. So, but true. one of the things that you've got, you've got them hanging on quite a long string, so I guess yeah. the tiniest flow of air would make it turn around. That's right, and, and they glint in the sun too, which is probably not to their liking. Yeah. The, you might see through there, you see that very strappy leaf lily down the yeah. back there? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was originally on this property, and I think I've got the only, only ones that are left here now. The, the original lady or one of the original owners of the next door gave me a cutting and it's a it, it, it's a crenum lily and it, it gets a pale pink spike of flowers usually about about 20 of them it's oh. absolute picture they'd have to be very tall wouldn't they very very tall very yeah yeah they grow up probably five foot five foot six foot high so oh. so that's looking very lush now but i, I think out of all the there were there were patches of them all through, but I think I've got the last remaining one, which is right. nice. And here, more azaleas around. Yeah, more azaleas. Um, pots full of yeah. petunias. And, and uh, I, all, I have huge pots of tulips here also, because tulips in pots are wonderful. And they just, it's just, because when there's no leaves on the trees and you get the tulips coming up in the spring, it's... Uh, very, very nice. And the garden clubs who do come come here always always come at that time. I have had them in autumn too when the dahlias are out because that, that's a nice time of year. I'm going to have to come back and <laughs> look yes, at that time. You're welcome. Anytime. And this is an interesting area because here is a real border between the lushness of your garden, which 11 years ago was really just a paddock, mm. and next door, which is a lovely grass area. But it just shows how this kind of tending of a garden cre can create something that's so dense and lush. And in 11 years, you've in completely in transformed years. it. Yes, that's right. And and it doesn't take that long. I mean, we might have been here 11 years, but I would say there were, there were big results after about five. So right, okay. A lot of that was a lot of hard work. I don't think I could do that, and I've got no intention of starting another garden. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's time to enjoy this now, isn't it? Is. It is, and that's the most important part. I mean, you do it to, to relax and, and just get the benefits out of it. So yeah. the solar fountain's working quite well now with the sun. I, I think oh, that's okay. A great idea. Does it stop yeah. working when the sun goes? Oh, yes. yes. yes he won't get in. <laughs> so you fill up your, your water features every day? No. No, 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 that one lasts for a long, long time, and the, it's all recycled, so... Right. Um, because my water features, my bird baths are in the sun. They dry out every day. Oh, right. Mm. Oh, I, I top them up, but uh, unfortunately the mosquitoes are bad this year. You can see them in front of us here. They love, they love the water. No. That's our friend Molly, so that's the end of our... Oh, thank you, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> It's All right, that looks right. as if it might be the end. I think so. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Pleasure. Terry, for joining me for this. Something out of oh, absolutely. How long is it before? I, uh, can you let me know when it's on? Yes, well, I well, certainly will. Yeah, great. so thanks again for joining us on Radio Blue Mountains. Thank you very much, Susan. You're welcome. If you've just joined us, that was an interview with Terry Sheehan at Wentworth Falls. And after speaking to Terry, I went next door to his neighbour and spoke to... Uh, Hilary Astor. So in a moment, after our community service announcement, I'll play for you the interview with Hilary. And thanks again, Terry. That was very interesting going through your garden. Hi, Nicola here from the Salvos. This year has been especially tough for all Australians. Devastating disasters followed by the COVID-19 crisis means more people are finding it hard just to get by. Sadly, this Christmas, thousands of families will struggle to afford a basic celebration. You can give hope this Christmas. Please go to salvationarmy.org.au and give to the Christmas Appeal. Help us leave no one in need. Station sponsor. 
Hi folks, did you know your septic tank needs to be cleaned and de-sludged every three to five years? Sydney Wide Environmental Services know. They also know that trust and reliability are paramount to their clients. Why do they know this? Because with 30 years of servicing the public and businesses, they have earned a first-class reputation across the board. So for thorough cleaning of your septic tank or enviro system, choose the company that plumbers use, choose Sydney Wide Environmental Services. Their professional staff can also help with grease trap waste removal, stormwater pits and drains, pipe repairs and CCTV inspections. Impressive, huh? So why not call now for a free comprehensive quote on 9627-7133 or email sidwide at bigpond.com. Radio Blue Mountains 89.1 Hello, this is Bronwyn Logan with Community Notice Board. The Springwood Growers Market is usually on the fourth Sunday of the month, but owing to the Christmas season, it will be on Sunday the 20th of December at Blue Mountains Theatre and Community Hub in Macquarie Road, Springwood from 9 to 1. For information, phone 0414 733 400. This is the final week for application to the Varuna Writers' Centre 2021 Fellowship for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Writers. For details, phone 47825674 or go to varuna.com.au. The Campbell Rhododendron Garden in Bacante Street, Blackheath is open daily from 10 to 4. Unfortunately, their tea room will not be operating until further notice. For information, phone 47878965. The Blue Mountains Historical Society at Wentworth Falls has reopened their research room. The museum is still closed. For details, phone 4757-3824 or go to bluemountainshistory.com. Tickets are still available for the Robin Yates Cancer Wellness Centre's gigantic Christmas hamper raffle. Tickets are $5 and available from the Katoomba Opportunity Shop until Monday the 21st of December. The Blue Mountains Hospital Auxiliary Shop is open for business and selling a range of giftware and books. The shop is near the emergency department and is open Monday to Friday from 10 until 1. If you would like your event publicised on Community Notice Board, you can email information to cnb891fm at gmail.com or via our website rbm.org.au. Update from the New South Wales Government. Contact tracing relies on two things to work. One, everyone checking in at venues so contact tracers can get in touch. Two, is COVID-19 testing so cases can be identified. So keep checking in and getting tested immediately if you feel unwell. For more information, call Service New South Wales on 13 77 88 or visit the New South Wales Government website at nsw.gov.au. Station sponsor. If you've just joined us, you're listening to Green Thumbs on Radio Blue Mountains and I'm playing some interviews that I had this week with um, two wonderful Wentworth Falls gardeners. The next one's Hilary Astor who has a, a new vegetable garden at the back. So enjoy Hilary's garden if I can describe hers verbally for you. So then it changes so quickly. So before I go any further, I just want to thank you, Hilary, for joining me on the radio play program on Radio Blue Mountains. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I should say that I'm kind of very much a beginner gardener. I've only really had this garden for two years. And so I'm learning. But fortunately, I'm surrounded by neighbours who know a lot. <laughs> so I pick their brains shamelessly. Well, for a garden that's only two years old, this is extraordinary. I'm looking at huge cabbages. <laughs> An incredibly lush row of garlic chives. Garlic chives, yes. And chives and onions. It's an onion bed and rocket and... What are those called? Um, artichokes. 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 And in here is a protected garden. And what's in here? Lettuces. So, yeah, this is kind of more or less the greens bed. That the, the very healthy rhubarb, which is happy now that it's not being moved around the garden. Um, we've got lettuces, we've mm -hmm. got 